Hello, we are back with the full length remake breakdowns. Today I'm going to be walking you through how I remade Me and My Cup by Ken Carson from scratch, making all the sounds from scratch and serum. Gonna be teaching you about sound design, mixing, all that fun stuff. So buckle up and get ready to learn some stuff. Okay, so here's how my remake sounds. stuff going on here so I'm gonna just start with one thing and then we're gonna work our way through it but yeah uh, let's go the first sound that I remade was this pluck it is a medium complex sound there's not a huge amount going on but let's get into it so with no effects here's how this preset sounds essentially what we got mainly going on is just a very vocally sounding synth pluck the first thing we got is this BS2 acid waveform if we take the unison off, it just sounds like this. And the unison is kind of the thing that's making it sound kind of fuzzy and more spread out. That's one of the main things that kind of define that sound in the original song. Next, we layer in this native curse wavetable. Again, just a slightly higher frequency vocal kind of sound. Together, they sound like this. Then we are just layering in a triangle wave set down an octave with the level turned down quite a bit to uh, help add a little bit more body to the sound. Subtle, but you know, it makes a little bit of a difference. We've also got a little bit of white noise just to make it a little crunchier. Then for our effects, I started by adding a multiband compressor with our mix set to 64%. As you hear, that brightens up the sound a lot, kind of brings it forwards. Then arguably the most important part of this sound, a uh, bit crusher with our distortion. Set to down sample mode, I have the mix at 85% and the drive at 13. And you can hear it really just makes it a lot crunchier. Next, I just did a basic low cut with an EQ. Then we just got some basic delay and reverb. And yeah, uh, pretty simple. Now, the next sound we got is this other little pluck thing. I noticed a lot of people kind of missed this sound when remaking this, and I think it's a pretty important part of it. Again, overall, a pretty simple sound. We just have a saw wave as our main oscillator. Then we're just adding 10 voices of unison making it a lot wider. As you can see, our detune is actually cranked up quite high. Normally when I'm making kind of super saws like this, I keep the detune straight down the middle. As you can hear, it keeps the pitch much more steady, but as soon as we start to push that detune up, it gets a lot more unsteady, which is kind of what I think they were going for with this sound. If you don't know, the way Unison works is it creates a bunch of duplicates of the main sound, all pitched slightly higher or lower than the original. This creates like a nice kind of false width. And the more you push that detune knob, the further away from that original pitch those duplicates are going to be, making it sound wider, but also like slightly more out of key. Next for effects, we have a chorus mix on 50%. I raised the low pass filter all the way up. Again, kind of making it even more watery and detuned sounding. Then just a basic low cut. And just a delay with our mix quite low and a bit of an EQ on our sound, just to make it a little more subtle. Next, we got our pianos. I legitimately just used FL keys. I think it sounded pretty close to the original. I played around with the hardness and release a little bit, but nothing super crazy going on. Then we got this lead sound. A lot of people who remade this did not get this lead sound right, because I think you hear very obviously there's like a higher layer, but tucked down underneath that higher layer, I, I noticed there's like a slightly lower octave layer that's like barely, barely audible, but it definitely is there. And I feel like a lot of the presets people used to kind of remake this sound don't have that lower layer. Here's how it sounds by itself. And here's how it sounds with no effects. Very funny, kind of the uh, sound design behind this is very similar to the, I think, Broken Square preset from Omnisphere. Essentially what we got is two triangle waves, one pitched up an octave, one pitched down two octaves. Then we are taking an LFO that is moving very, very fast, as you can see, 22.5 hertz. Like you can't even see how fast that's going. And then we are mapping that to the fine pitch of both of our sounds, essentially making the pitch go up and down really, really fast, almost to the point where it doesn't register as the pitch being modulated at all. If I slow this down, you're gonna hear what I mean.
definitely a cool sound then we got just a little bit of unison on our higher layer i'm also using a filter to kind of cut some of the high end because i feel like it sounded a little too harsh without that <laughs> Then for effects, I started by just adding a phaser with the rate set to zero to give it a slightly more kind of like stagnant sound and not move around as much. Very subtle. Followed by just a multiband compressor. Brighten it up, bring it forward, do a little bit of a low cut and a little bit of a high cut to get rid of some of those extra highs again. And lastly, we just have a chorus again with the low bass filter taken off, makes it 50%. Again, just making it sound, you know, a little more detuned. There's also a little bit of portamento going on here, you'll notice. Now I'm just going to go through all the kind of one-shot sound effects that play throughout the beat. You know, I think they're very important, but uh, it's a little easier to hear them in isolation instead of when I layer them in with everything. Here's how they all sound together. <laughs> the first thing we got is these beepies. Love me a good old sine wave, super simple sound. Literally, we just have a sine wave set to mono with legato, uh, no portamento time zone, no glide. And we just have a basic delay with a compressor afterwards to kind of boost the echoes up a little bit. And just a little bit of a low cut, but super easy. Next, we've got this kind of squishy sound. A little bit more complex as you can see right off the bat so here's how it sounds with no effects and the main thing we got going on here is two square waves the first thing we're doing is making this kind of LFO shape with our LFO tool then mapping that to the coarse pitch of both of our oscillators to kind of make it do that little rising motion we have one square wave pitch down an octave and another one at normal pitch both with five voices in unison and the detune turned down a bit now the thing that really makes this sound is this bandpass filter we've got this shape for our lfo one and it is mapped to the cutoff of our bandpass filter essentially all it is doing is just kind of like gliding through and then pulling back a little bit and the reason it kind of has such a vocal sound is our resonance is cranked super high the key behind kind of any like squishy vocally sound is usually to have a filter with a butt ton of resonance kind of moving in some kind of direction a very key thing in a lot of dubstep basses as well wow something about that resonant peak really kind of mimics the human voice in a way now for effects we just have a basic compressor just to kind of smooth everything out a little bit then a delay and reverb and a low cut with an EQ. But honestly, not super crazy. Here's another sound that a lot of people missed, I noticed. Almost sounds like a car alarm. It kind of is layered in with the organ that you hear in the beat. Again, really simple. We have our LFO one map to the coarse pitch of a sine wave. All it's doing is just modulating it to go wah, 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 wah. For effects, I just have some basic compression EQ and then a little bit of chorus to make it sound wide again. But yeah, a super simple sound. Now probably the most pain in the butt sound is this organ. A lot of people I noticed kind of had it like a roll. I felt like this was kind of a similar sound. The science behind making organs is very similar and I always kind of take the same approach when I'm doing these. So here's how it sounds with no effects. Kind of bad. So we got three oscillators going on. A triangle wave in our sub pitched up an octave. Our oscillator A with this kind of a harmonically rich sine wave and then a copy of that for our oscillator B. Slightly different though, you'll notice, even though they look pretty similar. So, the way that you make these kind of harmonically rich sine waves is you can go into your wavetable editor, and if you just add one little like bar right here, that's going to give you just a plain sine wave. But as soon as you start adding more bars, you start getting more harmonics for your sine waves, making them sound a little more interesting, and adding just a little bit more high frequency content. Like if I do this, sounds really bad, but something like this is going to be much less noticeable. Here's just a plain sine wave. Then here's a little bit more. And we got this. And you see it sounds a lot more organy already. We've got a little bit of bend going on for both of these. And then also just some unison with the detune turned down. We also have our LFO one map to both the pan, the level, and the fine pitch of both of these oscillators, giving it a little bit of movement. Making the pitch go up and down, making the pan go back and forth, and the level also fluctuate. Now for effects, we just start by adding a compressor it up a little bit of soft clipping eq chorus for more width very important the mix is turned up quite a bit low pass filters also taken up all the way and then just a basic delay 
Now the final thing that kind of makes this organ the way it sounds is we have a pitch reverse dive thing where it goes The way we do this is we have our LFO2 set to a shape like this and then we have the amount going down and it is mapped to the master tuning. So essentially the pitch of the entire sound is going but yeah, nothing super crazy, honestly. Now the final synthesized sound from this beat is this little sign lead. Another fairly simple sound. We just have a sine wave and we have our LFO one map to the course pitch of it, making it kind of go wow. And that's pretty much what defines the sound. For effects, I started by just adding a soft clipper to give it some more body. Then we have a basic delay, compression, and then finally just a reverb. We've also got this little vocal sound effect. I found this on YouTube somewhere. I don't really know the source. A lot of people say it's from Mario or it's a change off for a Hellcat. I don't know, but I know this is that vocal sound. We've also got this pad that I don't think is in the original beat, but I snuck it in there to kind of fill it out a little bit more. Uh, I do this a lot in my own beats. I just took the main plug from the beat. Then I ran it through a harmonic blur in Edison and added an OTT, just a little bit of EQing to do a low cut, and then a tremulator to give it some volume movement, along with a micro shift to make it super wide. Now for our 808s, I used the working on dying 808. Super fat, I love this sound, with just a bit of sausage fattening. <laughs> Last one at least we got our drums. I just got these from a great chaos pack on Reddit. It supposedly has all the drums from all the songs. These ones kind of sound off. I don't know how accurate it actually is, but yeah. And yeah, that's the whole beat. There's a lot of stuff going on. So yeah, uh, hopefully you learned something from that because this is a hard beat to remake and shout out everyone who remade it. And yeah, uh, let's go. Also, I thought I would mention I'm going to start doing these again, but as a Patreon exclusive thing. So if you want to learn more about sound design or how I remake beats, or if you want to even just use all the sounds from my remakes, you can get those on my Patreon at patreon.com slash period. It is a great way to support me since YouTube pays me literally nothing and same with TikTok. Yeah, it uh, just helps me continue to do these things. And yeah, thanks so much. Hopefully you guys enjoyed and I hope you're having a good holiday season and yeah, I'll catch you in the next one.